Alright, this is lesson 6.2, slope of parallel and perpendicular lines. In lesson 6.1, what we looked at is uh, slope and basically how you could calculate slope. Now we're going to see how slope is involved when you're dealing with uh, parallel and perpendicular line scenarios. So first of all, we need to define what it means to have parallel lines. Now I think you uh, know what parallel and perpendicular lines maybe look like, but may not have thought about them in terms of a definition here. So parallel lines are lines on the same flat surface that do not intersect. So for instance, I think of them as just straight railroad tracks. They're going to go on forever. Uh, the lines are never going to cross. Okay. Uh, perpendicular lines. They are lines or line segments that intersect at specifically 90 degree angles. Okay, so every time they intersect, there's got to be a 90 degree angle. If they uh, do not intersect to make a 90 degree angle, then we know that they are not perpendicular lines. Example one here. Let's take a look at some of these and figure out what's going on in these scenarios. Line uh, EF passes through E at negative 4, 2, and F at 2, negative 1. The other line passes through at negative 1, 7, and 7, 3. What conclusions can you make about these lines? So uh, likely, you can probably figure out that these are either going to be perpendicular or parallel. So let's take a look. Let's deal with the slope of EF here. So the slope of EF, I'm going to take my coordinates. So I'll take the Y coordinates. I'm going to take negative 1, and then I'm going to subtract 2. And I'm going to take 2, and this is where people sometimes go wrong. Remember, this uh, slope formula here is always uh, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So there's like a built-in subtraction sign. So for the y's here, when I go, um, there's the x's here, when I go 2 minus negative 4, you've got to make sure that you have that minus and then the negative 4. And then we'll simplify this. We have negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. 2 minus negative 4 is 6. If we simplify that, we have a slope of negative one half. Okay, so that's the slope of the first one. Now let's find the slope of CD. Okay. Finding the slope of CD, we will end up getting 3 minus 7 all over 7 minus negative 1. And when we simplify this, we have negative 4 over 8, which is also equal to negative 1 half. So what we would say for this example is we, we would say that the slopes are equal. So therefore, these are parallel lines. Okay. And uh, we could have just graphed it initially. The problem with graphing it, as you'll see here, is they may look like they're parallel, but just because they look like they're parallel, they may be slightly off right here. Okay, So let's take a look at this graph. We had uh, E was at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and 2. So we have E up here. And we had F at 2, negative 1. So this is F. And so we have a line like so. And then C we had is over here at negative 1, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And D was down here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and up 3, 1, 2, 3. Now you're going to look, although I didn't use a ruler, those do look like they're parallel. But you can probably imagine if I just put this point, let's say, right here, it would be very hard with the naked eye to determine if those were parallel or not. That's why the equation is so useful. Next question we have, determine whether the quadrilateral, um, so they're going to give you four vertices here, is a parallelogram. So parallelogram obviously means that the opposite sides are going to be parallel. So let's take a look here. Let's go and graph this first this time and see what, uh, if our suspicions are that it is or is not a parallelogram. And then we're going to go and prove it using um, the slope equation or slope formula. So we have A is located at 0, negative 6. B is located at 2, negative 1. C is at negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And D is at negative 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0. Okay. So this is the figure that they are looking at. So we're trying to figure out if the opposite sides are parallel or not. Okay. 
So uh, my thought here is first let's go find out. Uh, we'll find out these this slope here, and then we'll work on um, a b. Okay. So let's say the slope of c d is equal to. Well, I have zero minus five all over negative three minus negative one using those coordinates. When I simplify this, I have negative five all over negative two, which simplifies to be five over two. So that's the slope of CD. Let's deal with the slope of AB. Slope of AB for this one is going to be, so you take the Y coordinates first, so I'm going to have negative one minus negative six. Notice when I have the negative and negative next to each other, I put the brackets there just to break it up. And then I'm going to have two minus zero. This gives me five over two. So we know that the highlighted region there are parallel. All right, and uh, just for kicks here, let's take uh, the next part here. I'll do these in blue, and we'll go and confirm if these guys are indeed uh, parallel or not. Okay. So the slope of BC, so that's this side over here, is equal to five minus negative one all over negative one minus two. Simplifying this, we get a slope of 6 over negative 3, which simplifies to be just negative 2. Okay, is that slope there? And then let's do the slope of AD here. The slope of AD we have, it's equal to 0 minus negative 6 all over, oops, all over negative 3 minus 0. And when you simplify this, we have 6 over negative 3, which gives you also a slope of negative 2. So because the slopes were going in that direction, we should have both expected them to be negative, and indeed they were. Since we found that the opposite sides are parallel, we can say that it is indeed a parallelogram. All right, let's mosey on to the next page here. Graph A is located at negative 3, 5. B is at 5, 3. C is at 0, 0. I'll find the slope of segment C, A, and C, B. What conclusion can you make about these two lines? All right. Well, let's take a look here. Let's graph them first and see what we have. We have negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's A. We have B at 5, 3. So that would be B. And of course, C is at 0, 0, like so. So, well, what do I see with these lines right here? Well, they don't look like, because they're saying CA, so CA would be this line going in that direction. And let's say CB would be this direction. They definitely don't look like they are um, parallel. But can you assume that this is a 90 degree angle and just say right away that they are perpendicular? I'm not sure that we can. So let's go and prove it. So I'm going to find the slope of CA. The slope of CA is equal to, using our coordinates here, I have 0 minus 5 all over 0 minus negative 3. When we do this, we get negative 5 over 3. Okay, fair enough. That's all simplified. Now let's deal with the slope of CB. Slope of CB here, we have 0 minus 3 all over 0 minus 5. That gives me negative 3 over negative 5, which simplifies to be 3 over 5. Okay. Now if I highlight these slopes right here, you can see that they look kind of like the opposite of one another. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write you a very important note right here. These slopes are what we call negative reciprocals. Therefore, they are use this little sign right there, it's like an upside down T, what we call perpendicular lines. Okay. So as an example, do you guys just see that these two numbers right here are there, they're flipped, as soon as I talk about them as being flipped, and then the one has gone from being negative to positive. That means that they are going to be um, perpendicular whenever that happens. Okay. Instead of saying flipped in mathematics, we normally like to say reciprocal. If you remember what a reciprocal is, reciprocal is just a number that you multiply um, by itself to give you one. Okay. In this time, or in this example, we're talking about uh, negative reciprocal. So let's summarize what we know about uh, the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. The slopes of parallel lines, well, the slopes of two parallel lines are equal, of course. 
And we found out that the slopes of perpendicular lines. Well, the slopes of two perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of one another. That is a line A such that A cannot equal 0. Okay, so you only need to worry about that um, part for one scenario that we'll talk about uh, at the bottom of this example here. Um, is perpendicular to a line with a slope of negative 1 over A. Okay, so if you have a slope that's A, then it means that the other one's going to be negative 1 over A. That might sound kind of complicated, but you'll see how easy it is to find out what these perpendicular slopes are right here. So, state the slope that would be perpendicular to the slopes given. So you guys can try this on your own. Um, you might just want to then fast forward to the answer see how you did. So this first one, all you're going to do is you're going to flip it 3 over 2 and make it negative. You're going to flip negative 4, so I'm going to make it 1 over 4. And since it was negative there, this one's going to be positive. Flip this one. Since it was positive, or since, since it was negative, this one becomes positive. This one's kind of interesting with 1 because 1 technically is 1 over 1. When you flip it, you just get 1 over 1 or 1, but it just becomes negative. E right here, you flip it. Instead of it being 1 over 8, you get 8 over 1 or just 8, and it needs to become negative. Now, the interesting one is 0. Technically, 0, you can write as 0 over 1, but when you flip it, imagine you would get 1 over 0. And 1 over 0 is an example of something that is undefined. And so why is this the case? Well, imagine, right, a slope of 0 actually means you have a flat line. The reciprocal of that, to make 90 degrees, would actually be a straight up and down line. But we would say that this line is undefined. Okay? So that's kind of a unique scenario, a scenario that uh, I've seen creep up on some provincial exams. So uh, be careful on that one. Let's go to the last page and finish this off. Next scenario we have here is a line segment has endpoints at 2, 3. And f is at negative 4, negative 1. Determine the coordinates of a point, g, so that the line eg is perpendicular to ef. So let me give you a little diagram here so you can see what's going. So this is, let's say, ef. Ooh, it's kind of ugly. All right, so what they're trying to determine is determine the coordinates of a point g so that the line eg is perpendicular to ef. So they want to find some point, right? It might be somewhere over here, somewhere kind of around there. I'm not really sure where it's going to be, but you see, if I found that point, it might make a 90-degree angle right there. That's going to be my whole goal for this, all right? So I'll delete all that ugliness I put on there. Well, how are we going to figure this out? The first thing I would want to figure out is if I could figure out what the, the slope is of EF there, then I know that the slope of the other one is going to have to be the negative reciprocal of that. So I'll write you guys a little note. That's what I'm going to try to figure out first. First determine the slope of EF. So slope of EF equal to, taking my coordinates, I have negative 1 minus 3 all over, negative 4 minus 2. This gives me negative 4 over negative 6, or simplified, we have 2 thirds. Okay. So that helps me quite a bit, and I'll write a little note for this. Since we know the lines are perpendicular, that's what that little sign means right there, so I'll just highlight that in case you forgot perpendicular, then the slope of this other line that we're looking for, of EG, must be the reciprocal of this. So in this circumstance, right, I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip it, and I get negative 3 over 2, like so. So from here, what you can do is you can simply just navigate from this point E. You could go, let's say, down 3, so 1, 2, 3, and then over 1, 2. So this could be this mystery point right here at G. Okay. So what we've determined here is that if you navigate the graph with the slope of negative 3 over 2, uh, you can figure out a point that's on that graph. And so we figured out point G. And uh, point G was located at, what was it located at? Uh, 4, 0, like so. All right, but that doesn't mean that that was necessarily the only point that you could have had. You could have had any one of these points. So, for instance, if I was at G, I could have gone, again, down 3 over 2 using that perpendicular slope. I could have gone up 3 over 2. Basically, anything that's on this line that I just uh, drew right here would be an example of a solution. 
So to conclude this lesson, uh, what have we determined? We've determined that you can have, uh, when you have parallel lines, the slopes are going to be equal, and when you have perpendicular lines, the slopes are going to be the negative reciprocal of one another. That concludes this lesson.